Recently, President Muhammad Buhari told journalists at an interview that he had a candidate whom he would prefer to succeed him. Buhari would not name his preferred successor because he feared the candidate would be murdered if he was identified as having been endorsed by the president. The import of President Muhammad Buhari's expressed fear for the safety of his preferred successor seems to have been lost on many Nigerians. In 2016, exasperated by the spate of political murders, including the ones that preceded his coming into office, President Buhari had given orders for the reopening of all political murder cases in the country with a view to bring into book all those involved. The resolution of those cases will create a less convoluted political environment in which seeking public office has moved from aspiration to serve to a dangerous enterprise of long knives dripping with the blood of opponents. However, when President Muhammad Buhari expressed fear for his preferred successor's life because he could be murdered, the president admitted that political assassination was still abroad. He, as commander-in-chief, has not reined it in. Nigeria's political murder cases reflect the vice-like grip with which impunity has held down the nation. The failure by the authorities to resolve them fan the fear that either the state is involved or the state law and other institutions have been seriously compromised. If the states were alive to their responsibility, like in any other crime, I didn't see why the murder of late Chibolaige, for instance, have not the, those who perpetrated that uh, uh, murderous act have not been brought to book. Those who also perpetrated the uh, partial bomb that snuffed life out of late Delegiwa are yet to be arraigned, arrested, and investigated and prosecuted. Even when it seems crystal clear, as is usually said, that this person actually committed, there is what we call overwhelming evidence against such a person. The investigation may be compromised where the investigators, in this case the police, may be compromised through probably financial endorsement and some other social endorsement. And as such, they will not do a good job deliberately. On December 23, 2001, in Ibadan, Oyo State, former Oyo State Governor and Minister under the Abbasanjo Administration, Chief Bola Ige, a loved and respected lawyer and politician who was interested in getting to the root of corruption in Nigeria's power sector, was assassinated. Folkloric stories of how his cap was removed from his head at a function was thrown into the media space. A divided Awolowo political family became the focus of national conversation and the murder crime was reduced to a circus of an inconsequential past heroics. And what change Bola Ige would have brought to Nigeria's political turf if he lived and his murderers feared such change. Till today, nobody knows who killed Bola Ige and nobody has been held to account. On July 27, 2006, the former candidate of the People's Democratic Party PDP in the 2003 governorship election in Lagos State, Funsho Williams, was found dead in his Dolphin Estate Ikoyu residence. His body was found bound, strangled and stabbed several times. Funsho Williams was a member of General Sani Abacha's United Nigerian Congress Party but moved to the more accepted political party in Lagos and the Southwest, the Alliance for Democracy AD, before crossing to the PDP. The speculation in the media was that having pursued with the Abacha hounds, he was about running with the free political hairs and he had to pay with his life. Two people, Funcho Williams' campaign manager and a senator, were arrested on suspicion of complicity in the murder. However, the case went cold, if not dead. Harry Marshall, National Vice Chairman of the defunct All Nigeria's People's Party AMPP, was Muhammad Buhari's presidential campaign coordinator in 2003. Muhammad Buhari was a toxic candidate to many southern political interests in 2003. The shadow of a political clan that was intolerant of liberal democracy and a free society. 
to associate with Buhari in 2003 was bringing home ant infested wood. When Harry Marshall was murdered in his Abuja residence on 5th March 2003, as the presidential election was drawing near, fingers were pointed at his opponents and those who hated a Buhari presidency with passion. The list of Nigeria's murders which have yet to be resolved is not exhaustive. Here are some other murder cases in Nigeria which have gone cold. Chief Alfred Riwane, October 6, 1995. Delegiwa, 19th October, 1986. Kudirat Abiola, 4th June, 1996. Aminasaro Dikibo, February 6, 2004. James Kato, November 12, 1995. Eunice Olawale, 9th July. 2016. Otumba Dipo Dino, 26th January 2010. Ahmed Golak, 20th May 2021. Dr. Chike Akunile, 28th September 2021. Alex Bade, December 18th 2018. General Lasson Odeleke, 20th November 1990. Nigeria's cold and unresolved murder cases, especially the political murders, raise the concern of unpunished impunity. The power play, the inequality gap is so much. Where the rich can do something to the poor, can wound the poor and go free, is something that we need to look at. From the Universal Declaration on Human Rights, every human being is equal. The states that are supposed to do what it ought to do to protect life and property has completely, in my estimation, failed in that duty. So that's why we have uh, unresolved uh, murder cases, uh, cases that uh, Nigeria appear to have even forgotten about them. In the heat of the NSAS protest, Nigerian youths accused the police of brutality and extrajudicial killings. Can it be contemplated, therefore? that these unresolved killings can be traced to state actors? If not, why have they remained unresolved? Sometimes the investigation may not have done a good investigation to be able to tie that commission, the commission of the murder to that person. There are reasons I can say that are responsible for not the investigation taking too long and then not holding that person to account. More on corruption. Two, lack of funds. Three, poor technical know-how. Furthermore, is the state incompetent or incapable resolving these cases to the extent that President Muhammad Buhari now fears that mere mention of his preferred candidate in the 2023 presidential election will lead to the murder of the candidate? Who are these elusive merchants of death? The DSS in this country, they know, they know everything about everybody. The, uh, the, the police, you know, investigation units or fraud or anything, they have all the details. ICPC, EFCC, they have details about people and they have access to the data. And so we cannot claim ignorance that if you want the right thing to be done, the same machinery cannot be used. But sometimes they turn it around and use it and select, you know, do select it. You know, sanctions. The states, a lot of times, may not have provo pro provided enough funds for the investigating authority, in this case, the police. Investigation costs money anywhere in the world because there must be movement, there must be so many things are deployed. Where there is lack of funds to do that, even if the police wants to do a good job, they may not be able to do the job as needful. If these murders go unresolved and unpunished, other criminally minded state and non-state actors could become emboldened to undermine the security and safety of the citizens because nothing is seen to be the consequences of these murders. The citizen also loses hope and trust in the governments and governors. It is the failure of the state that are also emboldened the banditries, the kidnappers, the um, political office holders who engage in corrupt and corrupt influence. And you know that there are no consequences in Nigeria. And so these are things that Nigerian citizens should be worried about. Greater percentage of 
these murder cases go unresolved. Therefore, they now lose confidence in the ability, capacity, and even the willingness of the state. Therefore, when that state, which is saddened with that responsibility, has failed over time for the citizen, the citizen now has lost hope and confidence in that, and then that had now led the citizen to have what we call, to resort to what we call self-help. As these murders remain abroad, self-help becomes a rational reaction of injured groups and individuals. The prospect of a free-for-all self-help citizen reaction is dangerous to contemplate. To stop it, government must go beyond assurance and take steps to give a closure to these cold cases. In Abuja, Marvelous Oboman for the Signature Show. Mm -hmm.